Hey everyone, it's Tabria back with another episode of Milk Drunk. And this episode is very special to me because we have the actor, model, writer, director, Ooh. my love and father of my <laughs> child, Trey Hale in studio today. This former UCLA fullback who minored in theater is one to watch. Whether he's gutting down futuristic creatures in the film Love and Monsters, playing a dad trying to get back into football on the TV show All American, or making audiences crack up alongside Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne in the Apple TV Plus hit comedy Platonic, this breakout star is shooting to the top. Trey's latest feature film, The Real Bros of Simi Valley, came out in July, and he's just getting started. So welcome to Milk Drunk, Trey. How Thank are you? For you? Having me. I'm very good. That <laughs> intro was crazy. I know. I feel really cool. <laughs> I don't know who wrote that, but thanks. That I was know, awesome. Literally everybody <laughs> says that. Comes that on nice. Like, I sound so important. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That was cool. <laughs> That's so funny. But I'm glad you could come on today. This is literally the only time Trey could come on because he's going to leave me for four weeks. Unfortunately. To go um, shoot a film that he's leading. Um, and I'm really excited about that. I'm also very nervous, but we'll talk about that later. Yes. But... I think first we really want to just get a dad's perspective because you will be the first male host we've had on the podcast so far. And I think it's important to get the other perspective because, you know, I feel like in today's society, everybody puts everything on the mom. Mm -hmm. It's the mom's primary responsibility to care for children and even when you might see dads caring for children and the mom's not there, they're always, you know, getting kudos and right. extra support for that. And I think you do a great job. You obviously do a great job of caring Thank for you. our daughter, but I just, I'm so glad that you're here to offer your perspective and experience. So first of all, tell us how you felt when I first told you I was pregnant. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was shocked. I was excited. I was happy. It was something that we were not like, like actively planning yeah. but like we also weren't not actively planning as well mm -hmm. so yeah when he found out it just felt like uh yeah that was that's that's what it was this was our new life this was our future this is what we've been you know waiting for mm -hmm. um with our little chamaca <laughs> i know also nervous <laughs> though we keep it a band I mean, yeah very stressful very i was like, nervous too yeah like very scared um the good kind of scared, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because our lives were going to change in an instant, and we knew that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all the things, all the things. I think I told you this, but when I missed my my first period, I because I'm very regular. Mm -hmm. I never if if I miss my period, something's wrong. Right. So I took like five pregnancy tests, and they all came back negative. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I waited like another week, and it still hadn't come. And then I got the blood test done. I've never read a blood test before. Mm. Even I've gotten my blood drawn before, but the lab send it to the doctor and then they just tell me, oh, you're fine or whatever. Right. And I got the results and I'm like reading it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm really not pregnant, but my my cycle is just so late. I must be really stressed or something. And like another day had passed and you were in Vegas at the time. And I just picked it up again and I was looking at it and I was like, oh, I'm pregnant. Yeah. I, like, <laughs> I just misread it. <laughs> and then she decided to tell me after it was my like three drive. Days. Yeah. yeah, like I came back from Vegas that morning. I had just got like a, what was it? Like a two day tattoo. Yeah. It's like 14 hours worth of tattooing on my leg. Yeah. It was insane. I was in a lot of pain. I just drove. And yeah, I walked in and she was like, guess what? I'm pregnant. I was like, let me take this leather jacket off. I it just got hot in here. This I was holding crazy. it in for two days. I hadn't told anybody. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't wait till he gets back home. But yeah, that was crazy. Did we ever talk about like our birthing situation prior to getting pregnant, or that was like the first time it was brought up? Like as far as like doing the a home, home birth, birth or whatever. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. I mean, you had a lot of very you ideas. <laughs> Remember one at one point we were talking about dolphins. She was talking oh, about dolphins. Okay. No, I'm gonna say it, it was real. Do. It was real. It was real. There was a lot going on there. Uh, but I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> we're gonna go to that Brazil, was, or that's crazy. Shut up. I um, was not serious. I was just floating it out there. It was nuts. But oh ultimately, yeah, I think we we talked about it a little bit. But I wasn't. I I wasn't into it at first. Yeah. Remember, no. I didn't. I thought. 
the home birth was a little too much. It was a little too unsafe. I wasn't educated, so I was very ignorant towards the whole thing. And, you know, I figured the hospital would be the safest, most known way to do it. So, yeah, when you did present the whole idea of a home birth for real, like once we knew we were pregnant and this mm -hmm. is what you wanted to do. Yeah, I had to come to grips with that. But, you know, credit to you for educating me. And then I found out how awesome and special that experience could be and was for us. Very lucky. But even when I presented the idea of a home birth to you, I wasn't sold on it 100%. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to get a midwife's opinion and meet sure. with them and feel them out and just go from there, really. Because most people that I know who had a hospital birth, it wasn't a great experience. Mm -hmm. And I know I know some women who've had positive experiences, mm -hmm. of course. But um, especially all the black women in my life that I knew, they just didn't have the best experience at the hospital. So I was like, let me just let me just see what the alternatives are, you sure. know. And we went to our meetings and I felt really confident after the first meeting with Beth and Jen. They were amazing. They complimented each other so well. They were the yin to each other's yang. Yeah. And they just made us feel really comfortable and confident about everything and did we see them before we actually saw the doctor yeah i think we did yeah i yeah. remember we spoke to them on the phone too so that's because that's what i knew was really crazy that they were meant to be is it was just a phone conversation yeah and when we hung up with beth we both kind of looked at each other and was like yo she was she was on it like, yeah we liked the way that sounded and the way she kind of presented uh the home birth and her experience yeah. with home birthing um, and then we met her and Jen mm -hmm. together. And then that's when we were really like, yeah, they're yeah. they're the best tag team in the world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're very fortunate to have them. And credit, you know, to them at educating both of us because it was something that I was a little uncomfortable with. You were a little hesitant with because we yeah. weren't that, you know, versed on it. And they really let us know the ins and outs and kind of pointed out kind of the things that the hospital <laughs> does do yeah. that, you, you know, you might not know about and how it's... Sometimes not the most advantageous position for yeah. a woman to be in giving birth in a hospital in those white rooms with the nurses and doctors that don't really know you as much as your midwife totally. and doula can. So, Did yeah. you think there was like a stark difference between our appointments with our OBs and the midwives? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was night and day, honestly. And no shade to our OBs because they're, you know, just doing their jobs the way they know how to do their jobs. But... We were a patient, you know, mm -hmm. we were, you were their patient as opposed to like their friend and family, the way Jen and, and Beth made us feel. And mm -hmm. even the questions they asked were much more personal and, yeah. and really trying to get to know us and our relationship, our relationships with our families, as opposed to the OBs that are just kind of like, how you feeling? You sick? That'll go away. Let's yeah. do this ultrasound and get you the hell out of here. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. It was definitely different. Um, yeah, I, f I feel like midwifery in general from our experience, obviously, but they have a more well-rounded approach to everything. Yeah. Like they consider your mental health, your spiritual health, along with your physical health. That was like the first, that's always the first question they asked when we walked in. How are mm -hmm. you feeling mentally, spiritually, physically? Yeah. Well, every time we walked in every appointment, that was their first question they asked. Yeah. And at the doctor's office, sit, take your blood pressure. You doing okay? <laughs> okay. And our OBs were yeah, great. They were cool, yeah. They, there was a women, uh, women of color uh, facility, not facility, but a practice, mm -hmm. and they focused on women of color, and that was important to me. But even still, having having that relatability even, it's just, just felt very clinical. Absolutely. You know? I mean, just, it, the little things, like even I would notice Beth and Jen, Anytime they would touch you, they would ask for your permission. Mm -hmm. You know, do you mind if I touch the baby? And sometimes it would get a little ridiculous. Like, I'm like, what are you okay, doing? Just, yeah, just do it. You know Go ahead. <laughs> but it's just that amount of care and kind of yeah. respect that, that they put into their, you know, their work was, was awesome for yeah. us. And it really helped, you know, you, I imagine, be very comfortable. And then for me being your partner... You know, it helped me kind of be comfortable with letting them take the reins mm -hmm. and, and know that they know you. They know I don't know what you're about to go through. Yeah, I have no idea. No man could ever. Mm -hmm. So getting that perspective from them, I think, was uh, was awesome. Yeah, I think for me, 
what really stood out is like they made you feel like you were their only patient. Sure. You know, when we came in sometimes and they were running late and, you know, somebody would come before yeah. you like, oh, they're seeing other people. Like, well, what? obviously. You know, all kind of mad. <laughs> kind of yeah, jealous. Right. But yeah. I'm like, you know, you forget they have tons of other births that yeah. they're attending to. They do. I think sh- they only do like five or six births a month. That's mm-hmm. all they can take on because you never know when it's going to happen. Yeah. But just the amount of attention and detail that, you know, they put into each of their clients. It's just, you know, and doctors, they have a ton of patients too. They have more because they can take on more. Sure. But it's just the fact that, you know, they have a huge caseload too, but they're still able to show that compassion and empathy and make you feel like family and like yeah. you're important and heard. Yeah. Yeah, that it was it was just a really special relationship and it feels weird. Like we spent all that time with them and like now it's like, dang, well, you know, where'd we, they go? Where'd yeah. they go? <laughs> we kind of we hit them up every now and then. Yeah, it does like send feel them pictures, like, just check oh, in sometimes. Yeah. How you guys doing? Yeah. Me and Beth have the same birthday, too. I know, though, so that literally. Keeps us, keeps us cool, we know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, they're they're great. We're we're we were so lucky to find them. And yeah. I, I try to put them on to any you know couple that I know that's considering a home birth yeah. because they mm-hmm. yeah they made that whole process so awesome for us and and yeah taught us how to do it. It it took a little bit to convince you to be on board for the home birth, mm-hmm. but can you speak to what it was like when it came to our families <laughs> when they found out that that's what we oh, were doing? Man. Well, yeah, they none of them liked it. If I on recall. both sides, yeah, on both sides, they yeah. were all very much so opposed to it, um, and for good reason. They're from a different time, and mm-hmm. they're just they're just so concerned with your safety and her safety and all the things. So we we get it, but it it was a hard sell. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a hard sell, <laughs> and we you know I feel like they didn't start coming to grips with it and being comfortable with it probably until like three, four months into the pregnancy, because that's when we started to really yeah. like be passionate and, and we had a better understanding and we were really educated on on everything Beth and Jen had been taught us. So yeah, that was a hard sell for them, <laughs> yeah. which kind of sucked because, you know, we obviously want them to be on board because it makes it so much easier for you to be comfortable totally. and for you know, to me to be comfortable so I could be there for you. But we got through it and eventually, you know, I think they were all very respectful of our wishes, which was most important. Yeah. I think since day one, all we ever asked them is you don't have to necessarily agree with what we're going to do or be cool with it, but you have to respect it and, mm-hmm. and let us make our decisions as, you know, a family. Yeah, it definitely took some convincing that they were on board. I remember it was funny because you were handling, like during the birth, you handled all the communication and everything. Mm-hmm. But I looked at my phone once because they still kept me in like the family group chat when they were mm-hmm. updating. And my dad asked has she not gone to the hospital yet? I'm like, do you not know how a home birth works? <laughs> like, you've known this. We're at home. <laughs> right. <laughs> we were at the hospital. Yeah. Do they know? Have you have you talked about how that all happened? The start I, of that story? I have, but not, not in detail. But when I was six days, six mm-hmm. or seven days past my due date. Yeah. And, you know, I was getting kind of antsy, nervous. I was, you, Trey can tell you, I was doing everything. <laughs> To get her to come. I did acupuncture, massage. Yeah. I was drinking the raspberry leaf tea, doing all that. I did everything but castor yeah. oil. That was the only thing I didn't do. Yeah. And we were going to get a membrane sweep at the hospital. And we pull up and Trey gets out first. And I literally just step one foot out of the car. And I, I'm standing up and just this gush of liquid <laughs> it was comes out of me. And I was like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, this is, they said, it's not, it's most like, like most likely not going to be like the movies. Right. It's not that dramatic. It's just going to be probably a little trickling. Though yeah. Both the doctors and the midwife said this, just a little trickling, a little liquid. Some, some people don't even know when their water breaks. No, it was exactly it was like definite, the like literally it was crazier than the movie. Yeah. yeah, it was like a liter of liquid just yeah. spewed out of me. I was like, what the fuck? This is insane. Yeah, it was nuts. And I was just standing in the parking lot looking like I just peed myself. All these people walking past just like she's uh, all like half crying because she's embarrassed, right? but also like excited because we're going to have a baby. Right? Like, ah, I, I think my water is growing up. What do we do? Right. I, I think we go home, but 
Yeah. Uh, I had to run. I ran him to the, to the doctor. I'm sitting on the sidewalk, <laughs> just drenched. Yeah. Because he had to go up and let the doctor know. Yeah. I was like, I think her water just broke. And they said, well, I think you guys should just go home. You yeah. guys are doing a home birth. Yeah. So we turned around and yeah, that was nuts. <sighs> okay. So one thing I want to mention, our midwives, they highly encouraged us to get a doula. Yes. And we never did. Um, they just said, it's your first pregnancy. It's your first time doing a home birth. We just encourage you to get a doula mm -hmm. because, you know, we're not going to be there for the entire duration of your labor. We come during like stage three or when, you know, when it's, it's basically time to push. Yeah. And we were like, mm, no, we got it. We can do it. We I think we'll it. be fine. And we were really confident, really we were, confident we in were. that decision. Um, and I, I still am. I'm not setting it up to be something it's not. But I did get a little nervous, <laughs> like, when it came you. to it. But so it was literally just Trey and me throughout the entire labor yeah. until the midwives got there. So please tell me, how did you how did you feel, like, first, like, when my water broke and, like, leading up to it and being an active Absolutely laborer? rattled. Yeah? Absolutely rattled. It was... <laughs> Yeah, and it's funny because I remember them telling us multiple times that it would, you know, probably be a good idea to mm -hmm. think about getting a doula and both of us being very confident, borderline arrogant, like, yo, got this. Doula for what? Right. Nobody know you better than me, girl. Right. Come on. <laughs> like, I don't need no damn doula. Like <laughs> So yeah, we did it. And I'm and you know, looking back on it, I'm very happy that we that we chose that route because Same. I think I mean, we bonded we're already as close as they come, but that experience, mm -hmm. just really going through that, me and you together for, what, eight hours of... Fifteen. Fifteen. Way off. Yeah. Uh, felt right? like eight. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> going through that was, was, yeah, it was an insane experience. And I was very nervous, uh, especially once the contraction started to hit. And I yeah. started to see that you were really going through a lot of pain that, mm -hmm. you know, I there's nothing you could could do to help that i could kiss you and caress you and and hold you and do whatever you need but ultimately you're about to go to battle to mm -hmm. deliver a child primal. <laughs> primal i just remember i when i had like those intense back contractions and i was telling trey to like uh, apply counter pressure on my back because it gave me just a slight bit of relief yeah. but <laughs> I could tell he was getting so tired. What? And he obviously can't complain. Yeah. And can't he can't take a break. But did you feel like you got a workout? Like by the I, end? I I wore a bandana around my head on purpose because I knew I was gonna sweat. The minute you started to contract, I said, let me go grab my headband because I feel like I'm about to go to work. Yeah. And yeah, and she's telling me to push it on her back and like. I'm a pretty strong guy, I like to think. I was pushing very, very hard and harder, harder. It was insane. Yeah. I was sitting there like. Argh. But yeah, yeah, I definitely got to work out. But we got through it. You know? Yeah, we, we did. did it. You, 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 you were, I mean, credit to you. You're the beast. I was, I was just there trying to help out as much as I could. But I think the way you handled it and I mean, I'm every woman is going to handle childbirth differently it is such an insane like we said primal experience mm -hmm. that is it's nuts man it's it's wild um but yeah you were so calm and you were cool and and you know collected the whole time you were never mean you were a little intense yeah you know but you were never mean which i think went a long way at helping me kind of be there for you in the way that you needed um yeah, we didn't need no damn doula. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, I, I love how you handled that experience. And Trey is like a natural born leader and coach. Like if he stopped acting, he could go be a football coach somewhere <laughs> right now. And that's why I felt so confident in his abilities to be there and why I didn't think we needed a doula. And I know he obviously has no expertise whatsoever sure. in the labor experience, you know, at that time. But I just felt like it was more about emotional support sure. more than anything, you sure. know? And I think we did a good job at preparing. Cause yeah. And, and, and harping back to athletics, like you were an athlete, I was an athlete. You practice for the big game. You prepare so that the game becomes easy. And, mm -hmm. and credit to our midwives for having us on to 
get your birth plan and get everything figured out. You know, you had your area ready to go. You had the room with the posters on the wall and the drawings and your combs to grab. Mm -hmm. We had everything right there for us. So when it was game time, we hopped in and we and we we did what we had to do. One thing that I found interesting, not surprising, though, is that a lot of the men that I talked to <clears throat> who were present during late during a labor, um, their child's labor, they never saw the child emerge. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> and Anytime that was brought up, it just gave them the ick. They're like, oh, right. no, I didn't look at that. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And you were right there oh, yeah. the whole time. So let me try to paint the scene. We were in uh, one of our one of the guest rooms and Trey was on the bed and kind of holding me while I was in a squatting position. I had a birthing stool that I was sitting on, but he was supporting me um, underneath my arms. And we have this mirror directly in front of us so we can see everything that's happening. And um, I had planned to catch, you know, our mm -hmm. daughter when she uh, when she was finally delivered. But during the moment, I was like, no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Just just get her out. Get her. <laughs> but I also didn't need to because we could see everything that was happening. Yeah. yeah. And. You know, during that moment, it was just like, dang, this is this is gnarly. Like, oh, this yeah. is crazy. But it was it was so beautiful, too. But. I mean, I, I do think you're. You can handle a lot of different things. Sure. You know, I think you are built different. Quote right. unquote. Would you like recommend men to watch that happen? I think I mean, I think every. Man, if you're given the opportunity, you're fortunate enough to have the opportunity to see your child come into the world, I think you 100%, you know, should watch now. <laughs> Having done it, I get it if it's not, if, yeah. you, if you can't handle it, it yeah. is, it's intense. Mm -hmm. Like, it is exactly what you think it is. It's it's nuts, um, you know, but yeah, I think for me it was, I never even, I never even saw it saw that if it makes sense when I was looking down in that mirror because she's not lying it was me her a mirror right in front we saw it was we saw everything yeah. going down <laughs> um but yeah the whole time it was really just I'm seeing I'm seeing her like yeah. I could see her head coming out and then I'm watching you push and and that moment our midwife she they talked about this moment there's a moment in every pregnancy or every birth where the woman just, you know, she changes. She turns into, I know I keep saying the word primal, but that was really the theme of, <laughs> yeah. our, of, of, our, of, our, of our journey. But yeah, she just becomes her primal self and she's in her power and she's literally giving life. So seeing you like that in that moment was was awesome and being there to pump you up. I think I was actually in your ear like, let's go. Yeah. Like, let's go. You, you got this. We weren't there. We weren't there. <laughs> so yeah, I was, I was hyped up, man. Um and yeah, to answer your question, I, I think every man should watch. I'm not going to judge you if you don't. I'll judge yeah. you a little bit. Judge oh you a little God. bit. But yeah, if you're fortunate enough, you know, to see to see your your child come into the world, I I recommend it. Mm -hmm. Would it you uh, Would you do a home birth again? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think as long as you know you feel comfortable with it, your health is in order. None of like the mm -hmm. things that could make a home birth stressful or bad. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think it was awesome to have our own space. I know it made you feel comfortable to be in a bed, yeah. your own bed that you can relax in and, you know, our own environment and having our midwives be able to go cook food real quick for Dude, us. Like yeah. when the time came, like that was just, <laughs> yeah, it was it was awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't trade it. When I think of a hospital situation, you know, I hope that works well for everybody that does it, but it just sounds so much worse. Yeah. You know, just, yeah. Just very stressful. Very like, stressful. you're not comfortable, like you're you said. You're not comfortable, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's not to shade anybody who goes of that course. route. Of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, for us, we're homebodies. <laughs> so we wanted to be at home. And I think yeah. it's pretty damn cool. You know, the other day we were watching Real Bros, actually, in yeah. the room that she was born in. So, like, having to go back in that room and have her be there, it's pretty, uh, it's, we were smart in that we, we did com combo feeding, so you say it, right? Yeah. We mm -hmm. did that very early on. Yeah. I, I highly recommend that. It helped alleviate so much pressure off of you, mm -hmm. which in turn alleviated pressure off of me because you weren't as stressed and as pissed and as, you know, 
upset and tired, which obviously you deserve to be after you just birthed a 10 pound baby. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think doing that early on, cause we started that probably like, what, the like the second, second week. but uh, even or... before we, you started with those little thimbles. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Remember the little baby thimbles that we used to do? We yeah, did like that the, like early on. Like the syringes. Yeah. Yeah. That no, that like, was like, yeah, like, like that, day two, day yeah, three. Day two, yeah. yeah so, because first we, <clears throat> I was having supply issues. I didn't know that in the beginning. You know, it was my first time breastfeeding. I don't know what's going on, but she wasn't gaining weight. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we had some donor milk that our midwives um, supplied us with, which was really nice. And we were giving that to her through a syringe, but. She still was just having, it seemed like she was having latch issues. Um, she had a mild tongue tie that we eventually had corrected. Crazy. Uh, right. Laser. Yeah. Just... Down her mouth. <laughs> yeah. I hated that idea. He did. I, I hated that idea more than the home birth at first. He did. But it was very worth it. I'm happy that we did it. Yeah. But the second week is probably, that's when we introduced a bottle to her, yeah. I believe. And we probably started using formula what like week four because we were using donor milk for a while we used donor milk for a little bit yeah, yeah. not a while but you know yeah, yeah, the yeah. first month or so yeah and then um i was totally fine with introducing formula that was you know i just wanted her to be fed that was what was most important right and bobby was one that i just saw online all the time right. i was like okay i'll just use this all the people i trust use it so i'm just gonna check it out and use it no, yeah, the formula. So, I mean, it was it was easy to, for us to turn a formula because I think we were just so not like overly concerned about her weight deficiencies, but we wanted her to gain weight, mm -hmm. um, especially considering she was a 10 pound baby. So the fact that she, you know, kind of lost, I think, a little bit of weight early on. Yeah, she lost 10 percent. Yeah, it, kinda, mm -hmm. it freaked us out. And it was and, you know, we just wanted her to retain weight and get bigger and get to birth weight so we could start sleeping more. Cause that was like yeah. the whole thing they kept us once they're at birth weight, you don't have to like feed as consistently at night. You can kind of feed to to them based being on hungry their based on yeah. them. At nighttime, always obviously during the day. But yeah, that's all we were concerned about. And yeah, I think once we implemented formula, we started to see those gains. Mm -hmm. And even when uh my supply really came in, which was around three or four months, mm -hmm. when it was just like I could have fed her just breast milk if I wanted yeah. to, but we still did formula as oh, her yeah. night bottle. Um, yeah. And I think that helped a ton. I think she slept better. She slept like an angel <sighs> until she started teething. Till so, now. Literally. <laughs> Till now. Now you're the worst. <laughs> you're not the worst. You're the worst. You're not the worst. No, nah, she's not that bad. Sometimes I just wake up just with a hand right on my head. <laughs> Crazy girl. Right. <laughs> But you are a big adv advocate for combo feeding because all of his friends, well, most of your friends, they have kids. None of mine do. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but a lot of them come to you for advice yeah. about, you know, that particularly because a lot of their wives and partners are, you know, very, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, clear. yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that what? Don't say <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you I know, very you. like earthy type yeah, of girls. Yeah, yeah. And breast milk is. They want to yeah. exclusively breastfeed. Breastfeed, yeah. And yeah, your friends are just sick about it. They're stressed. Yeah, they're stressed because <laughs> she's stressed, and there's nothing wrong with it, obviously. But it's nice to lighten the load to 100%. get your partner to help you out. I, I mean, again, I, I feel like as a partner, as a man, you, you really you shouldn't give your opinions at all when it comes to <laughs> the mom and what she wants to do. Because again, I watched it. I saw it happen in the mirror. I saw what, what a woman has to go through to give birth and, and it is, it's insane. So if she wants to exclusively breastfeed, so be it. But I just, you know, in our experience, it alleviated so much stress just being able to help because quite frankly, in the first two, three months of the baby's life, we are kind of useless. All we could kind of do is change diapers. Yeah. Um. Because even at that point, the newborn really wants mom. Mm -hmm. She, they just came out of your body for nine months. So yeah. like they want to be on you all the time. They want to sleep on you. They're feeding for you. They can sense your breast milk like Beth and, you know, them mm -hmm. used to tell us. So there's not really much dads can do to, to be helpful. 
So when you can, you know, combo feed, you like, remember when we started, what did we do? We would like do shifts. And yeah. Like, you would be able to sleep the majority of the night and I would be able to feed her, you know, three times throughout the night. And then you'd wake up very well rested and ready to go. And then I can go get my rest. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it just helps with the whole tag team element of it. Maybe that's the athletes in us. We just, we we're just really yeah. trying to work like a team, but that's how it should be. And I think that's what makes everything easier and and better when you attack it as a as a team because raising a kid is hard. Yeah, um, it is. even when they're easy, we were very very fortunate to have an easy baby. I guess it's still hard. It's a twenty four seven job. There, you know, you got to be on it all the time. And they start walking, and then they're even crazier. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, as as much as you could do together as a team, I think is is very helpful. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, we have a pretty, not an extensive village when it comes to who helps us, but we have a good amount of help that's free. We have family yeah. and friends that come and help us out whenever we need it. Today, no one was able to, but it's yeah, except, for today. except for today. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're able to lean on them a lot. And I think that's what I learned most about myself and how I need to change and be able to just ask for help now. Mm. I'm, you know, you know me, hyper independent, never want to ask anybody for anything, mm. but mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> but now I, I have no problem, you know, yeah. because I can't, I can't imagine doing it with just you and I, sure. let alone being a single parent. Oh you know, I, I literally cannot fathom how people do that. But yeah, we have his family that comes and helps a lot. My friends will even come and help. And I was nervous about them, to be honest. So was I. <laughs> <laughs> so was I. <laughs> nah, they're great. They're yeah, great. but they've all been great. And yeah. um. Yeah, I'm, we're just so lucky that we have people that we can trust, you know, to care for her yeah. in our absence. Um, we surely don't take it for granted. Yeah. Because having, having that village or people that you can trust that can come help out, I mean, it is it is a lifesaver. It helps you keep a little bit, you know, of yourself intact. Totally. Because when you have a baby, it, it's, yeah, your whole existence changes in an instant. And you immediately can no longer be selfish anymore. You can't. You have to live for somebody else. You can. She'll be a shitty parent. But you know oh what I'm saying? God. You have to live for your kid 24-7. So when you have an opportunity to have somebody hold it down so you can step away and whether she needs to go to work and do her things or I need to go shoot a film or even date night for the two of us, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is very, very important to keep, you know, that fire and that spark in your relationship. Because once it does become all about them, yeah, romance is, is vital and you got to still look for it because she's there blocking. Yeah. She's going to block. They're going to block you all the time. All right. She blocked me last night. Shut up, Trey. Oh, Mad my as gosh. Hell. It's a block in. The cutest block ever, but dang. Uh, I Did know. Did that win real quick? <laughs> I know. We want to get her to sleep in her own room soon, but it's I don't tough. know. It's yeah, not looking like it's going to happen. It's tough, man. And that fervor method, I, I get it. I do, but oh, it's so hard, man. It's so hard when they cry. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> when they cry um and she like i feel like she's gonna grow up and be a singer she can she could cry for like like she'll cry all night if you let her oh, which yeah. we just can't 100 percent. she's uh -huh. like i know you're there yeah. come get me i'm not gonna stop <laughs> but now she like i think knows that she has levels to cry it's like she could really yeah, like let it go when she really wants something mm -hmm. crazy girl i know crazy girl. it is crazy to see she's getting like but kind of manipulative low-key like yeah. we can she knows what no is now and will cry every time we say no even mm -hmm. if it's in the nicest high-pitched tone she knows no, and mm -hmm. she's like, nah. It's wild how fast she grows. I know. I'm leaving for this month to go shoot this movie, and I have to be on duty. If she's going to take a first step while I'm gone, she has to trip her. <laughs> I have to push her she down. She has to push her down. So like she can't take her first step while dad's because away. Because it's, it's coming. I feel it coming, and I it's know. not going to happen when I'm there. So just a quick leg sweep. <laughs> She'll go down. Oh She'll be God. fine. Anytime she falls, that's good for her. Uh, yeah, we're just going to keep doing okay. that for a little while. 
something I mentioned in the first episode is an airport dad. Mm. And it's something that I saw on TikTok, of course. And it was like a trend going around where, you know, women were just like bigging up their partners or their uh, their dads and how they're an airport dad. And that it's somebody, <clears throat> it's a guy who's just very responsible and takes care of everything. So for instance, if you're going on a trip, it's the dad that has everybody together. They have their passports. They have their boarding passes. They're taking all the luggage and getting it checked mm. in and just being very responsible, you know? And I said that you were that. We haven't had that experience yet. We've never right. traveled with her like that yet. But I, I think we make great co-parents and it goes back to being a part of a team again. Um I don't know. We relate so much to sports because they were such a big part of our lives. Sure. But we handle we've been handling this really well. And like I said before, we do have a lot of help. But I think we listen to each other really well. Um, and we adapt to change well. Coachable. Coach Back to sports. <laughs> <laughs> literally trey always says i'm coachable uh, just tell me i'm coachable i might and mess it up once <laughs> probably mess it up twice but i will figure it out yeah I'm coachable. and he will yeah and he relieves a lot of you know m mental anguish from me which is a big deal i think people don't people underestimate the mental load that mothers in particular carry when it comes to raising a child because everything is on us I just feel like women are naturally more organized. We can sure. multitask better. We're better at time management and things like that. And I, I am that between us and our relationship. But, you know, as time has gone on, you know, Trey will ask me, oh, her appointment is this day at this time. So we have to change this. And I was like, oh, dang, I forgot her appointment. And he doesn't even use a calendar. He just remembers. I have to have a calendar to remember everything. Yeah. I think you saw it too, but... I don't know if it was the same video I saw, but it was talking about um, millennial dads and how they're more hands on and more emotionally involved mm -hmm. than, you know, our forefathers. Sure. <laughs> and you were raised by a single mom. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that affects how you raise her? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. I mean, my my mm -hmm. mom... Um, she was the best. She had a village as well, yeah. uh, a village of women, my grandma and my, my aunt. And then like, you can even talk about Jackie, who's like a sister to me, a cousin. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, seeing her kind of play both roles and seeing so many different versions of a parent, because my mom did have to play both roles. So she was gentle and kind and patient, but also had to be a stern, you know, honest disciplinarian at times with me. Um, definitely played a factor into how I wanted to parent and, mm -hmm. and kind of the care and love I want to lead with, with her and with you. You know, yeah, my mom taught me everything about caring for somebody mm -hmm. um, the right way and being there and listening and asking questions so you can be coachable and find out. I think that's a thing that most men don't do, at least in my experience with my friends and the and the guys I talk to is, they just assume or they're afraid to actually be like, yo, what's up? Like, what do you need? Tell me what you need. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I, I got that from her, but I took a lot of that from Beth and Jen, too. I used to love that whole how are you doing emotionally, spiritually, mm -hmm. eventually. I feel like I still do that you with do. you. Like, yeah. Every other week, I'll just ask you yeah. just to, you know, see how everything's going. How am I doing? Do you need me to yeah, do anything more? You do. Because I think it's important. You know, it's communication, like they all say, is such a vital part of a relationship. Um, and I really, really believe that as far as, especially when it comes to being a parent and keeping your, you know, your, your stuff intact. And mm -hmm. yeah, I guess I learned a lot of that from my mom. And yeah. Yeah. Do you think your friends who have kids, do you think they're like more emotionally involved than their It dads seems, or it upbringing? seems to be. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I think the world has changed a lot mm -hmm. over, you know, the past 10 years or like 20, 30 years. And it's become much more open and, and much more sensitive to people's feelings and emotions, which I think is really cool. And I think that goes into why us men are so are so much more involved than, you know, our predecessors were. 
because yeah, now we want to be involved. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And and we see so many more examples of good fathers out there, especially as and I hate to say this, but as a black man, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Seeing much more examples of great black fathers. I thought it was crazy. I think you talked about it how when we first had her, everyone was just like loving me up like mm-hmm. as if I was some type of superhero just because yeah. I rubbed your back during a home birth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that was that feels like it should be obvious, mm-hmm. but that wasn't the reality for our moms and yeah. our grandmothers and, you know, a lot of women, unfortunately. So um, I take pride in in being a part of a new generation of man that's still a man and mm-hmm. still dad, but also, you know, gentle and kind and present and, yeah. and there to be what I need to be for you and uh, her. Yeah, I really, <clears throat> I really love that. It's and obviously there's still obstacles to overcome, sure. but it is becoming more acceptable for men to be more in touch with their emotional side and yeah. not, you know, feed into the machismo stereotype. Right. Um, it's it's a really beautiful thing to see because even looking at all your friends, I don't, obviously I don't know them as well as you do, but mm. from the outside looking in, they all seem like great dads. Yeah. They all seem very hands-on. And, you know, sometimes I see these TikTok videos where, Clearly, I'm chronically online. Uh, Where, what's your screen time? Shut up. Don't worry about it. Um, it's less now that I've been reading. Hey. Oh, that's <laughs> sick. But, you know, there'll be random people interviewing others on the street or whatever. And they'll go up to a couple and they'll ask the mom or they'll ask both of them, like, when's your kid's birthday? Um, what's their what's their teacher's name? You know, just all these questions about your sure. kids you should know. And the moms will know everything, obviously. And the dads don't know anything. (laughs) And they're all like older parents, like Gen X and older. But I I just feel like all of your friends and you especially, obviously, like you're hands on and you know things about your kids. You're you're not just there to provide financially and dip. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I think a lot of people still have that perception of what, a father should be and how, you know, they go and make the money and they come home and they're still able to have a home cooked meal somehow right. and they go to bed and get ready. And right. no, that's not the reality. You know, people don't understand what it's like to be a stay at home parent and having to watch a kid all day. I think about my, <laughs> my, I'm sorry to cut you off, baby. Yeah, I was thinking about my, my grandma mm-hmm. and how, my grandfather used to work, come home to a home cooked meal, and then he'd go to bed. She would make his lunch for the next day. She'd get his clothes ready mm-hmm. for the next day and take care of four kids. Yeah. How? And it's just like, and that was just like, that was how they were supposed to do it, which is so crazy. Love my grandpa to death, but like, do something. You know what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying? Like, this is wild. Um, so yeah, a lot a lot has changed and it's all changed for the better. And totally. like I said, I'm very happy to be a part of the generation that I think is changing it. So uh, I know we talked about like how we co-parent and we approach everything as like we're a team. Mm-hmm. But do you think our parenting styles differ in any way in how we approach things? I mean, we do. We We like, again, we do it as a team. So I feel like we always discuss Mm -hmm. any type of decision. And if there is a disagreement, we will, you know, we find a a common ground to stand on. I would say, you know, you're more of the, you know, sunshine and rainbows. (laughs) And and I'm more of, you know, we're watching (laughs) WWE Smackdown on Friday and (laughs) all that type of stuff. I want to wrestle and slammer. Um, she gets mad because I keep saying I can't wait till she's old enough where I could really like really slam her into the pool and on the bed. It's going to be great. Um, so yeah, you know, but I, I, I do think we, we truly handle everything together. Yeah. So I, it's hard to answer that. Like, oh, you, we have a different style because our style is just, it's what we do. Yeah. Um, like I said, if there's disagreements, we talk about it rationally and then we come to a common ground is what's best for her. There's been times where I've had to be like, okay, you're right. And there's been times where you've had to be Mm -hmm. like, okay, you got me there. You're right. So, I mean, it's back to communication. Like I said, just really be able to communicate with your partner. I also think when um, we'll be able to really tell that as she gets older. Right. And when discipline comes into the picture, 
Yes. Um, because I think we'll be very different in how yes. we handle, you know, issues like that. Yeah. But you know, we have a little bit of time it's before gonna, that really happens. It'll be fine. <laughs> I think ultimately we're both we come from families that were structured mm-hmm. and and did believe in respect and discipline yeah. and those types of things. Um, I think harping back to like you said, times have changed. There was a way that they used to discipline back in the day yeah. that's a little aggressive, a little crazy. When <laughs> yeah. I think of, you know, some of the wooden sandals I got <laughs> to the back of my legs, pretty, pretty nuts. Made me strong, but still kind of nuts. Yeah. But I know that both of us, you know, will still be will be firm and stern and and most importantly, honest. Yeah. Which I think is is I'm very fortunate to have a partner <laughs> that believes in honesty and letting her know all the things that she needs to know and being real with her because kids are smart. They're smarter than I think people give credit for. Totally. And they can tell when you're bullshitting them, um, even though you don't think they can. So keeping it a band with her and yeah, I think she's going to grow up and be pretty sick. I agree. I think she's going to be cool. She's going to be a WWE Women's <laughs> Champion oh of the world. <laughs> Mark my words. <laughs> First it was a surfer. Now it's WWE. Yeah, it was. I mean, surfing was sick too, but I could be there with her in WWE. I could like do a role like a dad character. It'll be yeah. sick. Oh my. You just want to live out your fantasy. I do. And that's why you have kids. So you can live our vicariously oh through. Gosh, that's no. the whole point. <laughs> no. She can do whatever she She'll wants. She'll do whatever she wants and yes. she's going to have our support and whatever that is. Yeah. Do you, um, I feel like our answer changes all the time, but how do you feel about uh, having a second? Not right now. Uh, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, not right now. <laughs> it's definitely something that I would, you know, want in the future. Mm-hmm. The idea of a big old family with the woman of my dreams is awesome. Mm-hmm. But... It's also a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely want her to grow up a little bit more and be a little more independent. Um, I don't want to in diapers, which I think you can agree yes, there. Yes, agree. Um, and, yeah, we just go from there. I think there's some times where we're like, yo, the Three Musketeers is pretty cool. Just the three it of is. us. Pretty it's sick. T, 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 three T's. Um, we have another one. We got to come up with another cool T name. It's I a know. Lot. It's a lot of um, pressure. <laughs> but like you say all the time, the idea of giving her a sibling, somebody to grow up with, somebody to, you know, get into trouble with, mm-hmm. all those types of things. I, I think that's pretty cool, too. So yeah. we'll just see what we'll happens. see what happens. Yeah. Something that Bobby really champions is paid leave. Because, as you know, this country does not care about yeah. anyone, especially parents. All right. And the stat that always stands out the most to me is that one in four women go back to work two weeks after they give birth. Wow. Which is insane to even think about. Yeah. I mean, at two weeks, I was just getting out of bed. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was crazy. I think for us, especially me, I know you didn't have a clue either, but (laughs) we didn't really take into account maternity. I didn't even think about paternity leave because I just knew that wouldn't apply to you. But Mm -hmm. I thought that I would get a little something, you know, a little grocery money here and there, but it never came. I was not qualified. Um, But now I know how, you know, if we do decide to have another, I know what I need to do to be able to have access to that. But um, it was a rough time Yeah, when, (laughs) you know, I was pregnant and when I had her because Trey's an actor, obviously, and he was on strike. This is mm. when the writer strike happened and then uh, the actor, actor strike, strike followed yeah. right after. And the industry was just quiet for like six or seven months, something like that. And it was literally during the thick of my postpartum journey. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she was born in August and I was back at work in October. And it was just, I did not, I did not want to do that, but we had to make some shake, you mm-hmm. know, it was, it was a really hard time and we, you know, obviously we got through it and it, it was fine eventually, but I just wish there was more support in this country for that. And I'm, all, I'm always, I'm surprised that, I don't know, maybe SAG has to have something for like. Do you know anything about that? For I haven't. I don't. I haven't yeah, looked into that. Because they, you know, they provide you with insurance, but mm-hmm. I don't know if 
it extends past that. Yeah. Probably not. But maybe I'll look into it. But yeah, I just wish the standards were higher in this country because a lot of, uh, you know, like European countries, they get like a year, you know, yeah. or six months minimum. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I it mean, was... it's something that I feel like I didn't even, I didn't even really know about. I don't, I don't think, again, talk, you know, we're very fortunate and we're blessed, but with our jobs, like, it's like we didn't, it didn't really think about it until it was time to think about it. Yeah. Cause it was like, yeah, we worked hard. We, you know, we stacked up, we did certain clients, certain jobs, whatever we had to do. Um, and then, okay, it was time to lock in and have a baby and when we should be fine. And then that strike came and then everything started to happen. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, we started to feel a little bit of the heat yeah. on the back of your neck. And we were still very fortunate. Um, you know, we had a village, we had a lot of support. We had a lot of people helping us out with things like food and things yeah. for her. Um, you know, financially, which was which was such a blessing. So we always ask our guests if they have any parenting hacks. So do you have any for the audience? Uh, Miss Rachel, Gracie's <laughs> Corner. <laughs> They're our best friends. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, obviously, I think a lot of parents have certain views about screen time yeah. for obvious reasons, and I understand it. Um, I find it that Miss Rachel is very educational, and, mm -hmm. and if you need a, a quick relief, um, it's very helpful. Other than that, hi. let them crawl. Um, once they, you know, are old enough to crawl, I find with her, clean the floors, cover the plugs, all that stuff. But yeah, let them move. Let them get it all out. Let them get nice and tired for you. Mm -hmm. um, that helps a lot. And then, yeah, I would really stress uh, combo feeding. I think is mm -hmm. the ultimate hack. <laughs> if you could find a way to, you know, help feed the baby. And keep a little stress off of mom. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it will alleviate stress off of dad because mom is is in a better mental situation. Um, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. I also and want this, this move right here. Oh, yeah. The over the knee. Over the knee. A little vibration. <laughs> yeah. Gets him every time. Um, one that you really stressed to me is that, you know, we need to leave the house Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're able to do this, I know if you work a typical nine to five, it's really difficult. But, you know, if you're if you're a stay at home parent or you're able to be around your kid a lot, get them out of the house, no matter how old they are. Yeah. It helps so much, especially as they get a little older. She's about to be 11 months and she just gets so bored. Yeah. You know, she's seen this house every day, all day. <laughs> so she wants to get out and experience new things. And it really makes a difference in just her awareness and even her her sleep, you sure. know, when when she can get out and see all that L.A. has to offer. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think those would be ours. Make time for your lady or for your for man, however other. you want to say it. Yeah, yeah but I think that was the advice that, you know, I got a lot from from husbands and dads that I really respect. And yeah, I think that is very important. We just went to a Dodger game recently together. Yeah, and it was, was really just, fun. we left early because somebody was over it, but we still <laughs> went and we had a good time and it was, it was, it was dope. And I think that's, that's very important. So Trey, before we go, please plug everything about you, whatever you want to plug. Uh, you can watch All American, me and All American on uh, the CW app. Real Bros of Simi Valley is out now on the Roku channel. And season two of that should be here uh, by the end of the year, hopefully. So Really? I don't know. Oh, I think. probably We're next filming year. in August. Early next year. Something. Okay. And your socials. Oh, his and, Instagram. That's and, all he uses. Yeah, all I have is Instagram. <laughs> uh, it is at It's Trey Hill. Yes. Thank you for the follow. Yeah. <laughs> and for watching this podcast with my beautiful lady who oh kills it. Isn't she a natural? Okay. <laughs> She's so good. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Trey. I really appreciate it. I think you set a great example for all the fathers out there and fathers to be as well. And I love you so much. I love you too. <laughs> um, so I will see you guys next week on another episode of Milk Junk. Bye.